Hey there, Julian from MemberStack here, and in this video, I want to talk about gating content in MemberStack. And what I mean by that is all of the different ways that you can gate content and show the correct stuff to the people who should be seeing it and hide the correct stuff from the people who should not be seeing it. So just to get started, let's go ahead and talk about who this video is actually for. So as you can see here, all of these things are highlighted, which means this video is useful for everyone, whether you are a complete beginner or you are a pro. Now, the only people who this video is not for are people who are already extremely familiar with MemberStack and all of the ways of gating content because we're just gonna talk about the different ways that content can be gated. So if you already know that, then well, this video is not gonna be too great for you. But anyways, let's get into it here with the first method. And the first method is gating content and gating restricted URLs. So what that means is when you set up a gated content group in MemberStack. So here we are in MemberStack and we can see gated content and I can add a gated content group. Let's say I can give this a name, call it all members, and then I can add restricted URLs here. So this is super useful for, let's say gating the entire platform, everything inside it to only people who are logged in. So let's just say all pages starting with app where if you have a folder in your Webflow site called app, everything in here is gonna be gated. And then we would redirect them to, let's say, log in. And this is the simplest way to gate entire pages to the correct people. Now, a couple things about this are, one, it is very easy to set up as you just saw. Now, it is also client side gated. And what that means, if you're not familiar, is it is gating everything, it's hiding the correct stuff when the user goes to the page. So while that is good for a lot of situations, you do need to keep in mind that if somebody knows what they are doing, they can possibly access this. They can access the content on the page, they can view the page source. So this is good for generally gating content. Like I said, gating the entire app folder so that when people go on it who are not supposed to be there, they are going to get redirected. That being said, this is not something that should be used for gating extremely sensitive stuff. We'll get to those methods later on in the video. But while we're here, let's talk about the second method, which is gated content attributes. So going back in member stack here, let's say we've added our gated content group called all members and we've gated it to all members. This is essentially the same thing, but what we're doing here is gating specific items. So we can see the content ID here, all-mbrs. And what we could do is go on a page in Webflow and apply the attribute data-ms-content equals all-mbrs. And what that's gonna do is hide that individual piece of content from people who do not match the condition of all members or members on specific plan, whatever it is that you set up. So a couple things about this as well are that one, again, it is very, very easy to set up. And two, again, it is client side gated. So somebody who knows what they are doing can possibly see these things. This is very, very good for stuff that you are gating for user experience. So for example, let's say you have a button which launches the profile modal where they can then update their profile. Well, this is good because then you're not gonna have people who aren't logged in clicking it and unable to do anything. This is mostly for user experience, for hiding things from people that are gonna confuse them if they don't have the correct level of access. So again, this is good for general gated content, but for things which need to be very, very secure, this is probably not your best bet. Now let's move on to the next method and that is hosted content. Now, this is where it gets more secure because what's actually happening here is the content is being gated inside of MemberStack. So if we go back into MemberStack over here, we can see hosted content in this panel and I can click add content and select between HTML or link, give it a name, let's just say ebook, for example, and then I can paste in some HTML there, a link to a file, whatever it may be. And back into our presentation over here, some things about this are that one, like I said, it allows links and HTML. So you can put in any form of content, you can add a link, whatever it is that you wanna do. And it is gated server side, which means that it's not doing what we were talking about before. 
the user's not going on the page and then it's being hidden from them. It's actually not even going to get that HTML or that link from MemberStack until they've been authenticated and it's been proven that they have access to that content group. So this is very secure. This is perfect for private stuff. Like for example, if you're selling an ebook, if you're selling files, whatever it may be, is stuff where it is jeopardizing your business model to have any sort of security issues. Now, while this is really, really great, just keep in mind, it can be hard to manage. So what I mean by that is with the previous stuff we were talking about, just standard kind of gating content using attributes, you can still manage that content inside of Webflow. But using hosted content, you're actually pasting in the HTML, or the link, which means you need to go into member stack and manage that if you want to change it. So this is not very good for, let's say, gating an entire page, an entire dashboard. This is good for gating the stuff that is just really needs to be secure. So now let's talk about the next method. And now we're getting into member specific stuff. So what member JSON is, is basically some stuff associated with a member hidden inside of that member and it can only be accessed by them. So this can be added in a number of different ways. It could be added through Zapier and Make. It can be added using our front end API. However you add it is up to you. It depends on the use case, but this is server side gated as well, which means that the only people who are gonna be able to access this are, are the member who actually has that specific JSON nobody else is gonna be able to access it. So you can rest assured knowing that whatever goes in the JSON here cannot be accessed by anyone except for that specific member, which is great as long as it doesn't need to be public, of course. Um, and some things about this are that it has a large limit. Each member can have 1 million characters of JSON in them, which really gives you a ton of possibilities. And like I said, it is in JSON format, obviously with the name. so. With this, anything that you do will have to be able to pass through in JSON format. And something about this to keep in mind is that it can be updated from the front end, which means that one, it's very good because if you have a script using our front end API that is allowing people to add or remove things from their JSON, they have total control over that. So it's really great for, as you can see in this example, we have this chapter one, lesson two marked as true, which means they've completed that. This example is for a course site where we want users to be able to say, I finished this lesson, I haven't finished this lesson, so on and so forth. Um, but if you're doing something which let's say you want to be able to have full control over, the member can never touch it, it can only be updated from the back end, then member JSON isn't for you. But what might be for you is the next method, which is metadata. So. Metadata, again, is server side. This cannot be accessed by anyone except for that specific member. Now, metadata does have a smaller limit of 500 characters per member, so you're not gonna wanna keep a whole bunch of super complex stuff in there in their metadata. The format of this is key value pairs. So as you can see here in this example, this member has allowed children for current children too. And this is a great example of when we were making a team accounts prototype using member stack, something that we don't want the user to be able to automatically update on their own if they know how to code, um, because then they'd be able to say that they're allowed more people on their plan than they're actually allowed. Uh, this is really great for that kind of thing. Now, this cannot be updated from the front end. This can only be updated in the back end. And what that means is users clicking buttons, performing some kind of action are not gonna be able to update the metadata, which is great for stuff like this. Um, it actually needs to be passed through in the backend. So for example, we have an automation for this where when the member purchases a higher plan, it will update the amount of allowed children that they can have. So for anything like that, that is specific to that member needs to be secure and you do not want them to be able to update it on their own, only when you've said so, this is a perfect way of going about it. And finally, let's talk about the most difficult and most secure method, which is reverse proxying. So if you don't know what reverse proxying is, it's basically using what is on your Webflow site to show the user content, but adding a layer in between that to check on certain things. 
If you have a reverse proxy setup, then you can actually completely control everything who is being served the content before it even gets sent to their browser, which is really great. And this is super powerful also because you can use certain whatever database you want to use. You can use Zeno, you can use Supabase, you can use Airtable, whatever it is that you want to use to actually control this content and serve it to the user. You don't just need to use the Webflow CMS. So this is really, really powerful. That being said, this is the hardest one to set up. We don't have any tutorials on this yet, but we do aim to in the near future. When we do, I will drop it in the description here and let you know. So this one is super powerful, but also super difficult. And finally, just to wrap this all up, the way gating content in MemberStack works, there's no right or wrong answer. You really need to take a look at your situation, your project, who you want to hide the content from, when you want to hide it from them, and how secure it needs to be to decide which type of method you want to use. Because some of them are easier to set up, some of them are harder to set up, some of them are more secure, some of them are less secure. And you don't just need to use one method for your whole project. Most bigger member stack projects are using a combination of at least the first five of these without the reverse proxy. So a lot of different things that you can do. If you do have any questions, just drop them right here in the comments. I'll talk to you soon and have a great day.